For the first time in a year, residents of three out of 11 municipalities near the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant will soon be allowed to visit their homes freely. The easing of the restrictions will begin next month. No! The prospect emerged on Friday night as a government nuclear disaster task force led by Prime Minister Yoshiko Noda decided to review the no-entry areas of three municipalities. The no-entry zone in Kawauchi village will be split into two evacuation zones as a result of the review. There are about 300 residents whose homes are in the no-entry zone. There will be, they will be able to visit the area without permission from the central or local governments. A festivus for the rest of us! Work including radiation decontamination will begin ahead of their return. And instead of a tree, <laughs> didn't your father put up an aluminum pole? We must return home as my child will start going to school next year. I hope the decontamination will make progress. Oh, no, sir. Festivus is all too real and I could prove it. This is temporary housing for people from Tamura City. The city's no-entry zone will be reclassified as an area where residents can prepare to eventually return home. If I have to. Yeah, you probably should. This is a step forward for the recovery and rebuilding. I will work together with the residents to find ways to restore their area. Hey, I hired you to work during the holidays. This is the holidays. But it's festivus. The government has also decided to review the zoning of Minami Soma City, a part of which is inside a no-entry zone. The city will likely be split into three areas, including one where there will be long-term restrictions on people moving back to live. What? <laughs> you know you're infringing on my right to celebrate new holidays. Minami Soma will no longer be part of the no-entry zone from April 16th. The mayor of the city welcomed the decision, but he also expressed concern about the slow pace of decontamination. That's not a right. Well, it's going to be, because I'm going back on strike. Many residents still feel anxious, especially about decontamination. The central government needs to provide a guideline. Happy Festivus! The zoning of the other eight municipalities will likely be reviewed next month or later due to concerns about splitting the communities into two or more zones. Is that the poll? George, Festivus is your heritage. Residents are also concerned about differences in compensation among the different zones and are dissatisfied with the government over its rebuilding plans. The tradition of Festivus begins with the airing of grievances. Japan's energy policy is at a crossroads. Its leaders once considered nuclear power a stable, clean supply of electricity. But more and more people say it's dangerous after last year's accident at Fukushima Daiichi. I got a lot of problems with you people! Reactor after reactor has gone offline for regular maintenance since March 11, 2011. None has gone back online. So now, only one out of 54 is running. Frank, no offense, but this holiday's a little <laughs> out there. The government is looking at firing up two of the idled reactors. The units passed new, more stringent safety checks. But the idea of restarting them has not won public approval just yet. Oh, and another piece of the puzzle falls into place. A new a radical, a liberal. Hi, Kevin Blanche. Japan, TEPCO are playing one sick, sick dangerous game. And for all you people who say, I cannot say a sentence without using language, and you can't use my videos because of language, this one's for you. I grew up in Utah, a good Mormon boy when I was a little kid. I taught for 12 years. You think I can't give a lecture without language? Please! I'm passionate about this subject because this is the socioeconomic subject of our time. They're playing one evil, evil, sick game with us. Very evil, sick game. This is so dangerous. What is going on as the lies from TEPCO and Japan? Look, let's review. Let's review. Let's talk about fission. As I've said, China syndrome is going on. China syndrome is going on. And let me tell you, talk about what is China syndrome. China syndrome is nothing more than a contemporized word that was built out of popular culture, as many English words evolve out of popular culture to have meaning. The meaning, China syndrome, means nuclear fission. Not nuclear fusion, nuclear, nuclear fission. What is nuclear fission? When a core reactor for a nuclear plant 
does not get cooled for an extended period of time. As those rods melt and melt and they get hotter and hotter and they start to fission together, what happens is science knows this happens. It creates a power unseen to man. It creates gamma rays of epic, epic proportion, unseen in Hiroshima, unseen in the Nevada test site, unseen in Chernobyl. Look, these things, if this thing blows, if number two blows, let's talk about the lies of TEPCO and the lies of the media and the lack of the media even getting there and doing anything, which the writing was on the wall. The lack of TEPCO or the IEA is they downplayed Chernobyl. Chernobyl was one horrific nightmare. Look, nuclear fallout into the human body is a cumulative. Plutonium, cesium, iodine, these things are cumulative. For thousands and thousands of years, they build up in the body. They build up in generations. They build up in the soil. They build up all through the human body. As it gets into the human body, we all have Chernobyl in us. We all have Fukushima in us. We all have the open air Nevada test in us. It gets stronger. We all have the benzene from the water in us. As it builds up and gets stronger and stronger, it becomes a cumulative. It becomes a cumulative. You know, I don't think it's any ironic that I end up with leukemia after everything that I've ran. That's my home right there. I'll show you my home when I get done. That's where I live, right there on the eighth floor. But look, TEPCO, well, the story that came out two days ago is one mega, mega major story. Does it prove that they are liars? Yes. Does it prove the IEA is purely liars and covering the industry? Why would they do that? Because the nuclear industry they know is on the ropes. And they know that the nuclear industry is propped up by federal funding, by government money, by flat ignorance. It is propped up by pure ignorance. If the American public knew, if the world public knew, it, their jobs are done. They got fat cat sweet ass positions. They don't do anything. Look, if fission, which we know is going on at two now, that's coming right out of their mouth. As it, that's the one that was supposed to be good. Reactor two was supposed to be good. It's three and four the ones that were supposed to be in such evil trouble. This is the one they were ready to put back online. That the IEA, that in December, everybody says, good, we're ready to put it back together and we'll fire it back up. Seriously, that one, that one, that one has fission going on. Look, if that thing blows, if that thing blows, it's going to put gamma rays into the atmosphere that have been unforeseen in the history. This will be the most catastrophic story in the history of the world. And this is not overstating. This is not overstating. I cannot overstate this enough. Look, I'm not a scientist, but my father was killed to this. I have a PhD, but it's in finance. But I dug in. I've dug in my whole life to this because I grew up in Utah. You know, we were contemporizers. The downwinders mowed down many of our friends and family. Everybody in Utah knew. Scott Matheson was killed the downwinder. We knew we were downwinders. We were, we, we were taught in elementary, junior high. We were very knowledgeable about this subject matter. All of us as we graduated high school. Well, then my father, the nuclear guinea pig out there, I poured in. I dug in, and I've dug in so deep. I'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody on this subject matter any time. But when these guys come out with this story and says, we are lying, they just basically admit, we are lying. This thing has been mirror naked the whole time. If it's naked and it's cracked and they cracked up, uh, those gamma rays are already full, full flight in there. If this thing blows, this reactor tube blows, which it could blow at any time. You know, just like in Russia. Russia spent $18 billion, sent 50,000 men into the tomb this. Or that would have been a thousand times worse than it is, which it is catastrophic. It's been downplayed. The death at Chernobyl is thousands and many thousands of times that has ever been reported by the AEA. Like I said, that documentary, The Battle of Chernobyl, the greatest quote I think I've ever heard is that woman says in there, the most dangerous thing to come out of that reactor and that meltdown in Chernobyl was not cesium. It was not plutonium. It was lies. Boy, is that the thumbprint of Fukushima. Is that not the thumbprint? The lies are the most, and the lies, we always had the fourth branch government, the media, always covered us. As Rupert Murdoch has stolen it. Who would ever think Rupert Murdoch could take complete control of a whole world society, which he didn't. As he did not win. Think about the implications of that. Think about the implications as he did not win. Bush. Gore won by 60-something freaking electric, but wasn't even close. That's 30 different outlets reported that Gore won because he did win. And it was Rupert who stopped it and sold it. And everybody just sits back and says, oh, that's okay. Think about the implications. Gore wins. Alito and Robertson are not on the court. 
There are two liberals that are on the court. The court is probably sitting right now 6-3 liberal. Obamacare would have a full mandate, the whole thing. It wouldn't have been the sloppy, butchered up freaking mess they had. It wouldn't have done it. The Supreme Court has no legitimacy, none. That's coming right out of Byer's mouth. Is that photograph of him coming out of the court will be the iconic thumbprint. Look, it's like you're in a relationship and one tells a lie. You know, one's cheating on the other and it just snowballs and it snowballs and it gets out of proportion. You know, and or you're you know, doing something bad financially and the, your partner doesn't know. It just snowballs. That's what happened here. He stole the election and the lie just snowballed. It could temporize lying. It made lying go into the in vogue. If you work hard, integrity, hard work, strength, do everything that our parents, our grandparents are, not only do you fail, you probably commit suicide. So a young person, you build up a business, and the guy next to you who's doing the same business is exploiting goods in China, using slave labor. He's cheating the system, paying illegals with a wink and a nod, cash. He succeeds, you fail. We have contemporized and made popular lying. Lying, cheating, white collar crime is not only legal, especially in this state, is encouraged. We don't punish them. We don't do anything because the big lie was told and the big lie evolved. I mean, this country was built up on honesty, integrity, and hard work. We threw that away. We threw it out of the way. And that's what's going on with the media. The media is falling for it. And I love how the media thinks they are the 1% and thinks they do represent the 1%. There is no 1% in this nightmare. There is no 1%. There is no 1%. You cannot hide. You cannot hide. And the media is just much to blame. TEPCO and the Japanese, what they did to their own people is so grotesque and so sickening and so horrific. They are playing roulette. Japanese Harry Carey roulette with the world. They're playing the French Trench. They're playing the freaking beachhead on freaking D-Day. They're playing this card. And we as the whole world population, let them play it. This is the intellectuals of our time in the United States. Well, the whole world for that matter. These are the intellectuals of our time. This is the thumbprint. This is who the echo boomer is. This is who the baby boomer is. These are the smart ones. You people do not care. Why do people not care? I have no idea, but they don't care. It's like I say, no one cared about Vietnam until they got a draft card in the mail. Then they took to the streets. Millions of people are going to get draft cards from Fukushima. And that draft card is going to be called cancer. And you can't run to Canada. There is no Canada. This is a war from hell. I'm in that hospital right there. That's my room. Right there, that building up at the top. That's my room. That's where I live. That's where I get the living chemo down. You know, and I like all you people with your alternative medicine answers. This is acute. Acute means something. This is not chronic. I do not have chronic leukemia. I don't have chronic. This is acute. This is an evil, fast, nasty, aggressive killer. It almost killed me within a few weeks. It is acute. I understand that cannabis works on chronic illnesses. I understand that it pain. I understand the diets. But when you're in an acute situation, you are on the verge of death. The only freaking cure for acute AML in the interim, in the interim, is chemo. That's it. You guys can talk all the fairy tale. I, you know, Rick Simpson is right. You know, he's all right about so much thing, but not in the acute time frame. Over time, yeah. If I would have probably took care of myself better, maybe I would have, you know, maybe if I'd ate iodine and clay the whole time my whole life. But I didn't know, and I didn't. You know, I don't think hardly anyone has. But I have a really special close friend who is 64 years old, who is the most militant anti-cancer eater there ever was on every freaking diet you guys talk about. She died on Christmas Day of cancer. It is in the air. It is dust in the wind. And if you people don't care about your children, you don't care about future generations, what, what does it matter with America? What does it matter with the popular opinion? And what does it matter with the whole world. Are we all so lazy that we don't do anything? There's no activism going giant because you can't get close to it. We try. We try. I try. When this thing blows, if this thing blows, this will be the biggest catastrophic nightmare this world has ever seen for thousands of years. And we know that Japan is lying to us. We know the media has been lying to us. They just come out and admitted it. That story that was reported two days ago will be the biggest piece of news reported. As the beautiful quote in The Battle for Chernobyl says, the most evil thing to come out of that reactor in Chernobyl was not seizing, was not platonic, it was lies. Kevin Blanche.